deserve to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah from over 1400 years ago is his last in the seal of the prophets. I greet you, my dear beloved brothers, sisters, and the greetings of peace and love from Adam to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This week, we want to talk about, even though I did tell you the next time I come to you, I was going to do part two of shaitan, the nature of shaitan, but I thought about it and I, I changed. I want, to, I want to do that at another time. I want to appeal, and the subject is, I'm basically appealing to my Muslim brothers and sisters, and especially myself, first of all, that we need to take more time out to read and study our religion. We have to take more time out to read and study our religion. We have to take more time out to read and study our religion. Reading is acquiring knowledge. Study is a careful examination of a subject. Whatever field that we may be endeavoring in, we read about it, then we have to study it so that we know what we're talking about. We can explain what we're talking about and make it clear and intelligible to the people that's listening. Clear and intelligible to the people that's listening. Allah says in the Quran, this is the book, the Quran. In it is guidance, sure, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. This is our Lord speaking to us and giving us information, clear out the book, that this is the book. In it is guidance, sure, not doubtful, sure, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. And we said previously, the fear of Allah is what? Right conduct. Simple. The fear of Allah is right conduct. It's easy to obey the law when the police looking at you, right? Well, what about being the law when the police not looking at you? You see? Who, the book said, in it is guiding sure without doubt for those who fear Allah. They asked the message of Allah, what the, the angel Gabriel, alayhi salam, asked the message of Allah, he said, what is his sign? He said, the messenger replied, is to worship Allah as though you see him. Though you see him not, he sees you. You see, you see, you see in that concept, you see in that concept that now we are responsible for our actions when nobody looking. Because it's easy to do stuff when people looking, but what about when they're not looking? What about when they lie? See, the fear of Allah is right conduct. And his sign is to worship Allah as though you see him, though you see him not, realize he sees you. He sees us. When we worship Allah like that, we grow. When we study our deen, not just read it, but we need to read books on Islam. We need to read it. We need to digest it. Not just read it once, but go over the book again. Go start underlining things. Concentrate on the concept that the author is trying to project. Now, you may not agree with the author. Maybe you done read some things that you say, nah, I see that right here. Uh, this is not the end. I understand what he's saying, but no, I think we need to. You understand what I'm saying? This is when you start to study. 
This is when you start to, because when you first you acquire knowledge. Reading is acquired knowledge. You're getting informed. But now you want to get the understanding. You want to get the understanding. We believe in this previous scriptures. The Lord said, those who believe in the books revealed to Muhammad and, and, and revealed before Muhammad and to Muhammad. This is what Allah says in the Quran. So, the Bible, it has a quote in it. It said, worship Allah with all your might and all your strength and all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, all your ways, all your actions, acknowledge Allah, and he will make your path straight. That's Islam. Allah said in the Quran, this is the book, and it is guidance, sure, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. Who fear Allah. And what is the fear of Allah? Right conduct. And what is it saying? To worship Allah as though you see him. Though you see him not, realize that he sees you. When we can do that under discipline and sincerity, we good. You don't have to worry about what the next man thinks. Because who is the object of your worship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of times what we see with the physical eye is not always what we see. A lot of times people bring their what? Representative. Their representative. Until you get to know the person. Then you see if that representative is really him or her or not. After you get to know the person. You understand what I'm saying? After you get to know the person. It's very important for us to read and study. We need to make it a habit. And I'm talking to myself first. First of all, I'm beating myself down, first of all. And I'm not even trying to beat myself down. I'm just trying to encourage myself, encourage my brothers, encourage my sisters to read more of the Quran and digest more of the Quran and read the Sunnah, which is the preserved teaching, sayings, and life example of the prophet. The Sunnah is the preserved teachings, sayings, and life example of the prophet. What is preserved? Preserved meaning that it was held intact, it was protected, it was corrected, all the way up to today. The Quran we have right here is the same Quran in Morocco, in the Sudan, in Saudi Arabia. The same Quran. It was protected. Allah didn't say he was going to protect the previous scripture, but he did say he will protect the Quran. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, it's very important that We read the Quran and make it our, our water. Make it our water that we thirst for. Because the more Quran we put in us, right, is our food, it's our spiritual food. The more of that goodness, that 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 effectiveness, that posture gonna come out of us. We, especially when we start disciplining our mindset, right? Because we can take in a whole bunch of social media, right? And what happened? The big, the big thing right now is what? Diddy. The big thing right now is uh, Trump. That's the big thing. Diddy and Trump, right? You can take a bunch of that in. Is that really going to help you? Is that really going to help us as Muslims? Is it really going to help society? Because some people are deviated, some people are just chronic liars. Is that really going to help us? No. What's going to help us is reading the Quran and trying to the best of our ability, under discipline and sincerity, to apply it. To apply it. 
to apply that guide. This is the book. In it is guidance, sure without doubt, to those who fear Allah. That's all I got. Allah exalt the true followers of Muhammad as thou did exalt Abraham and the true followers of Abraham truly thou art praised and magnified Allah bless the true followers of Muhammad as thou did is bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, truly thou art praised and magnified. I greet you once again in the beautiful greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In continuance, the religion is easy. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The religion is easy. And no one exalts himself too much in the religion, but it overpowers him. So act the right. And keep to the means. And be of good cheer. And as for divine help in the morning, in the evening, and during a part of the night, That short saying of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is so deep. It's so deep. Just that little saying. The religion is very easy, and no one exerts himself too much in religion, but it overpowers him. So act the right and keep to the means and be of good cheer. And ask for divine help in the morning, in the evening, and during a part of the night. Deep. But it's easy. It's easy. But it's deep. This is why it's necessary to peruse the Quran, to go into it and try extract the understanding of the book. It makes you solid. It makes you a solid Muslim. It makes us solid. It makes us a solid Muslim. So I'm appealing to my brothers. I'm appealing my sisters to go on the Quran, study it. Study the life example of the prophet, which is contained in the Sunnah. The Hadith, his sayings. The Hadith is the sayings of the prophet. The Quran was revealed to who? To the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the things he said. And what did Aisha say? Put it together. She said that the Prophet is the walking Quran. So the things he said, what well, you think that? It's going to contradict this? He just explained to you what Islam is all about. Allah says, he who he got, no one can mislead. And he who he allowed to stray, no one can guide. So trust in Allah. Rely on Allah. Trust in yourself. Rely on yourself. That you have the potential within you to rise up and accomplish more than what you accomplished already. You got that potential. We all have it. But we got to be hungry. We got to be hungry and tap into that which is in us. Allah says in the Quran, you are the best of people raised up for the good of mankind, enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. 
But that means that we best now? First, we have to work on the individual and build the individual up. Work on those qualities of empathy, sympathy, discipline, self-restraint, self-control. You know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, and it was short, he said, don't be angry when a guy came to him and asked him a question. Give him some guidance. He said, don't be angry. The man asked him three times. He said, don't be angry. Why? Why did he give him that? Don't be angry. You know, it's been mass murders because of anger. People are getting killed all over the world because of anger. This guy get mad, he's the leader in one spot, and this guy get mad at him, and they started beefing. What did they don't go out and fight each other? What they do? They send the troops out. And what happens? They bomb everybody up, and people get killed behind this guy, and this guy can't get along. Can't see, can't negotiate, can't see, you know, to come together. One, per one person think that they right, this person think that they right, nobody wants to compromise. They get angry. And what happens? Boom, boom, take your life. Now who's gonna get the responsibility? Who's gonna ultimately bear the se se severest punishment for this murder? Who introduced murder? Cain. Cain introduced murder, and he would be responsible for that. You know, when you say a trendsetter, a trendsetter is a person who set a trend. Cain set the trend of murder because he was jealous of his brother. Because Allah accepted an offering from his brother and didn't accept it from him. So he got jealous. Shaitan came at him. So Jim, then he felt bad about what he did. But these people nowadays, right, they don't feel bad. Though. They just killing each other. They don't feel bad. You got right now, you got our Muslim brothers and sisters getting killed overseas. For what? Because this person say, this land belonged to us and we taking it. Listen, don't you know in the scripture, y'all was cut off the blessing. You was the blessed people. You was cut off the blessed. Matter of fact, you ain't the resident the original people anyway. You got a stolen legacy. A stolen legacy. You an imposter. You are an imposter. You stole the legacy of other people. Yeah. You got to check that out. You stole the legacy of other people. But now you're claiming that you're the better, and now you're going to... After so many years, and all your leaders making these blatant, racist, blatant statements that this land belongs to. So you're going to just come in my house, just take over my house, do what you want to do, and tell me I got to get out and live out in the streets. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Anger is what's causing a lot of deaths. So when the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam told the brother, do not be angry, he was telling them something that's essential. And lately, last week, I've been practicing that a lot. I've been trying, every time I sit here, I get angry sometimes, I get angry kind of quick, you know what I'm saying? And you know, <laughs> I know y'all can relate. <laughs> a lot of things make us angry. You know, little stuff, man, you know? But I've been practicing a little, especially on the road, man. When you, you got a lot of drivers on the road, man, that that's, I don't know how. Did they get their they, they license from Bamberger's? I don't know, man. Two guys? You know, for you old heads, you know. <laughs> I don't know where they get them from, man. But they be driving crazy out here. Lady, I was just coming here, you know, and I'm on, I'm coming down Hillside Ave, right? Not Hillside Ave, I'm coming down Broad Street, right? Before, you know, you got North Broad, then you got here, you got the highway to go east, 22, and you got the highway to go. I'm going down the east. So here's a big truck, you know what I'm saying? She can't even see who coming this way, and she's going to just go out there. So I'm getting ready to make a left, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I know a little bit about driving. She's supposed to stop. Then she's going to say, slow down. 
I just said, you know what? I'm not going to get angry. I, I just, I'm not going to get angry. Anger has caused a lot of deaths. Right now, this younger generation, you can't even get an argument with these guys now, man. You can't even get an argument. They can't take an L. You got to die, man. You beat me in an argument. You got to die. I'm going to kill you. Boom, boom, boom. Now you're doing life in prison. If, nobody, if somebody saw you, you're doing life in prison. All because of an argument. So you mean to tell me you have no value to life individuals. They have no value to life. So you're going to kill your boy because, because he, that was in an argument. Anger. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, do not be angry. I want to say, I want to go to, to, the, to, to something that the Prophet said. Because we were talking about the importance of really studying the deen and how it will help us and benefit us. Because there's a lot of things that we have to tighten up on and we have to work on the individual. Allah said, you're the best of people raised for it. We first, to become the best, we have to first work on ourselves. And empathy, sympathy, compassion, humility, discipline, self-restraint, self-control. We have to work on ourselves. We have to learn these words to see the definition of them and practice them. It takes time, but work on, learn who we are. Know who we are. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, concerning the Quran, I'm going to read a couple of, of uh, hadiths of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, it's narrated by Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, who relates that he heard the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, study the Quran regularly. For it will act as an intercessor and entreat for its readers on the day of judgment. So the Quran is going to act as an intercessor. The prophet says, study it regularly. Study. What we say, study it, a careful examination of a subject. What is reading? Acquiring knowledge. Now, when we acquire the knowledge, we want to examine the knowledge. We got a question. Like the Quran, when you read the Quran, it has questions in it. You have to answer those questions within yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't start looking at the Quran and start looking at other people because it say day and thou. And... No. It's talking to you. The Quran is talking to you to help you develop yourself. And once you become like the prophet, you become like a magnet that attract people and people just get curious because you have the qualities of a real human being of a real human being. But it takes practice. It takes practice. What they say? Practice make what? Perfect. It takes practice. So the Prophet Muhammad said, relates that he heard, um, uh, Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, relates that he heard the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa say, study the Quran regularly, for it will act as an intercessor and entreat for its reader. It's going, it's going to be in your behalf on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. Another hot deep. <clears throat> on the Quran. We're talking about the Quran. <clears throat> it's narrated by. Uthman ibn Affan, one of the caliphs, radiallahu anhu, who relates that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best among you are those who have learned the Quran and teach it to others. You learn the Quran and teach it to others. Do that mean that you have to learn be a hafiz? Not necessarily. It'd be good if you could. If you strive that way. But if you learn verses, if you learn concepts in the Quran, learn parables, what they mean, understand them clearly, like you understand the picking up this book and putting it over here. Understanding those concepts clearly, 
that it's not, you're not, well, I don't understand what this means. No, because you're not studying. You might have to clean your heart a little more. We have to clean our hearts a little more. We want understanding. We don't want to be in doubt. We don't want to be confused. We want to understand this thing clearly. Just like picking up this book and putting it back down. That's how we want to understand this thing, clearly. And we want to act upon the book. I want to read one more hadith, and there's several things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said about the Quran. This is by Abu Musa and Zari, who relates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listen, the case of a Muslim who studies the Holy Quran is like the orange, which is aromatic, aromic, means smell, and delicious. An example of the Muslim who does not recite the Quran is like a dry date, which has no aroma, but is sweet. <laughs> In the case of a hypocrite who recites the Holy Quran, it's like the fruit, which is although scented, yet it tastes bitter. In the case of the hypocrite who does not recite the Holy Quran, it's like the fruit, which has no aroma, and its taste is bitter. <laughs> Whoa. Woo, 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 woo. Hey, man. This religion is beautiful. Wouldn't you agree? We have a beautiful religion. We talk about unity. We talk about unity. How are we going to have unity until we develop ourselves? When Allah said, ye are the best of people raised for humanity. You enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah. First, in order to get that, to get that now, it was established in the back in the day, but in order to get that now, in order to get the unity, then we have to be like Michael Jackson say. Look in the mirror. Take a look in the mirror, look at yourself and make a change. If you want to make a world, the world a better place, then look in the mirror at yourself and make a change. That's true. That's Islam. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror. That's where you should start this unity at, because once you see yourself in the mirror and you know yourself, then you start correcting the things that you know that you should be doing. And believe me, you will see the miracle come about. You will see the miracle come about. You will see those into the religion in crowds, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. As-salamu alaykum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashadu wa na Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Hayya Allah salah, hayya Allah salah. Assalamu alaykum.